Hello gamers! My name is Dark John, and welcome to this very special tutorial on how the Hermitcraft mail system works and how to build one of your very own. What is the Hermitcraft mail system you ask? Well, in Hermitcraft Season 10, Pearlescent Moon decided to start a postal service on the server and she enlisted the help of Tango and Etho to make some redstone magic to make it all work. The end result was a package being delivered in a system that was installed at each of the Hermit's base and that allows them to send shulker boxes of goodies to any other Hermit's base on the server in seconds. Impressive. I've watched their videos and backwards engineered how it all works in order to bring you this video and a world download to help you make this in your own worlds and servers if you wish. So here's the beginning part of it behind me and we'll get into all the details in just a sec. This is not simple and there are plenty of gotchas I encountered along the way when trying to get this to work and I'll do my best to highlight all of those for you in this video to help you troubleshoot the common issues you're likely to encounter when building this yourself. It is not a build for the light-hearted. You will need to know some redstone, you'll need to know a lot about rails and how chunks load to make this work successfully. This is not a one-size-fits-all solution, you need to adapt it for every world you're going to install it in because the locations and everything are going to be very different. This build spans a massive area and is made up of many discrete components throughout the world so there isn't like a single light matica file I can provide easily either. If you want a schematic I suggest using this world download and grabbing the main components but this build needs to be adapted for the environment as I said. So um, let's start by giving you a quick demo of this system in action. So this is a test world I've created. It's just a creative world. You can see there's a command block here of course. Uh, there's no day and night or mobs or anything. It's a nice safe space to uh, experiment and exist. So I've created two locations. We've got player one's home right here and we have a big arrow up in the sky so you can find it easily if you're flying around the world. And if we look over yonder, way off in the distance over there, 400 blocks, is a uh, player's two's base out in the swamp. And they're not in a direct line either. I made this so like that's a straight line going out and they're way off in that direction over there. So that's player two's base and we'll go see that in a second. This command block is only here to help us teleport between the two locations. There we go, here's player two space out in the swamp. Uh, because if you're only one person on the server, it's hard to make this work and see things arrive on time. So if we just wait for Bobby to do its job and all the chunks to load, oh, it's in that direction. There we go. That's where we've just come from. There's the other arrow off in the distance over there. So we can very quickly hop between the two bases using this guy. If you do build this on a server, I do recommend uh, enlisting some help. It's very helpful to have a second person to help troubleshoot these things because doing it all in on your own um, is, is hard because you're in multiple locations. And if you're on a server, you're very unlikely to have things like command blocks to teleport you around. Oh, and this whole thing is done in 1.20.4 with experimental features turned on. Now, the Hermits, they used autocrafters in a design and I've done the same here in order to mimic it, but you can adapt this if you want to not use the autocrafters. I will show you that part when we get to it. Demo time. So I'm actually gonna pop into survival for this just to show it in action. So this is our box of goodies. We've got uh, a gift for somebody. Uh, it's their birthday and we're giving them a whole bunch of diamonds. There we go. So we'll take our shulker box, we're at player one's home, all we need to do is pick up a stamp. So the stamps are located here, this is just a barrel, you can make it a double chest if you want and at the moment these are just renamed pieces of paper with the other player's name on them. I've made them player one and player two. So player one doesn't have their own stamps, they don't need it, but if you had more players you would just uh, name them as such and create as many of these as you want. You can even have custom model textures if you desire, the same way the Hermits did. So we'll take a stamp from the stamp drawer. We put our shulker box on the back wall. You put a stamp in the dropper, and whenever you're ready, you hit go. Boom. That's going to do its thing. You don't want to leave the area for two or three seconds just to make sure that the minecart from here is sent on its way, but it should be safe to teleport over now. And we've just jumped over 400 blocks across the world and this takes approximately 28 seconds as I've timed it to arrive and when it does arrive we'll get a notification that it has done so. You don't need to be in the area, uh, this area doesn't need to be loaded in order for, it doesn't need to be a, a player present to receive it so you can be offline. There we go, dong, there's our shulker box and our birthday message, lovely. And uh, yeah, you don't need to be in this area, so you could be send it to someone when they're offline and when they log on, this will all just be here because the act of this arriving loads the chunks, puts it all in place, and they'll see that the light is on that they have mail. 
So we can send that back to player one. Uh, let's get a player one stamp from here. Drop it in the dropper. And hello. Off it goes. That's going to do the same in the exact uh, opposite direction, basically. Give it a couple of seconds just to make sure it goes through. It should be safe to now transport over here. And it, after 28 seconds has elapsed, we'll see that player one will receive that box back. They can receive as many items as they want. This mailbox can keep filling up as, as much as you can fit in a barrel. You could only send stuff in a shulker box, so you always need to use shulker boxes for this. Ding, there we go. Nice. Uh, you can use anything for stamps. I've just used paper because it seemed to make sense, but you can use any object you want. It just needs to be named something specific for each player, and I'll show you why that's important in a minute. So let's start by having a look at these little stations. These are obviously above ground. You can put them wherever you want in the world, and this is going to determine where you're going to uh, want to set these things up. Now, portals are obviously involved, and there are permanently lit portals around. So most uh, like servers and SMPs and things, you have portals at your bases. So you don't want to put this within range of an existing portal because you're going to get portal clashes. You really need to know what you're doing with portal coordinates and get the portals exact in order to make sure there's no crossover here. But on the surface, there's no portal. They're, they're way down below. So what do we do here? Uh, Put a shulker box against this wall. Let me go and free cam and show you just how this bit works. So we read out of this is the back wall block. We read out of here. There's a lock here. So this redstone line is powered, and um, you will not be able to send anything until both a shulker box and a stamp is present. You won't be able to send it without a stamp. So there's a bit of a, a fail safe there. And that's achieved by this redstone line being permanently lit. And there are one, two, three torches lighting it. That one is for the button. If so, when we push that button, that torch goes off, but the redstone line is still lit because these two torches are on. This comparator will detect the shulker box, turning that torch off. This comparator will detect the presence of a stamp, turning this torch off. So when you push the button in that instance, this line will turn off, turning this torch on, powering the dropper, the piston at the cross the top, and then this piston across the bottom to push the stamp along with it. And what happens is both of those things fly all the way down this hole. And then there are two holes needed to be dug, a drop chute, which is just air blocks all the way down to the mechanism at the bottom, and another one coming back up that is a water source, water elevator block all the way up. And when items do come back up, they come up here and they just drop into this hopper, which puts them into the barrel. We have a system here to detect that that has happened, ring the bell, and light the light. Simple as that. This part is the easy bit. So let's go downstairs and see what's happening down there. I put in this little drop chute here so you can easily uh, get down there and back up again in survival. Okay, so this is where the items come in. Let's uh, pop up here. They come into this hopper. We detect that the things are in the hopper. We power the rest of the circuitry. This is where the auto crafters come in. So let me um, get up there again and show you what's in these. So when something is detected here, we dispense a minecart with a chest right here. It's on this rail so it isn't powered. That gives a little bit of time for these two items to fall into it. And then um, after a tiny bit of delay from a repeater, that is sent on its way and it goes through the portal along this track here into here. Uh, the auto crafters. This part is kind of clever. So you just fill this up with iron, basically. And this crafts minecarts. And uh, that, this one here, you can, it will craft the chests. And this here, you just fill up with chests, this dropper. So when we run out of minecarts and chests here, because obviously you can only fit nine of them in, um, the system will automatically create more on demand as needed because people can send as much mail as they want. This person could send 10 pieces of mail without receiving any back and that would exhaust the supply here. So this system ensures that there's going to be plenty of uh, minecarts for chess always created on demand. If you wanted, you could remove this section. If you didn't have auto crafters on your world, you could just uh, whack a hopper into the side of this guy with a chest, or a chest or mini chests and tons and tons of minecarts with chests queued up just in case there's a backup. So you could remove a portion of this if you if you know what you're doing there. Um, but yeah, this is what it does. It dispenses the minecart, fills it up, powers the rail, and off it goes. 
When it comes back, it's really simple. Minecarts come back, come out along this track, and then they come up here, they get broken on the cactus. The minecart gets collected and put back into the dropper, so they're recycled, and the items get pulled out underneath as it's going through. Those go into this self-powered dropper, which pumps both of those out, and up it goes to the surface. So you need to make sure you're in the area for two to three seconds up here after after posting an item to make sure there's time for the items to fall. All of this stuff to happen and the minecarts go through the portal. Once that's happened, uh, you can leave the area safely. All the other magic happens in the nether. So this is the portal, this has to stay permanently lit and this is the one you need to make sure it doesn't clash with any portals on the surface for the person's base. Whoops. Uh, you want to make sure that it's far enough apart and you need to do all your measurements for that. So let's go to the nether. Okay, we are on the nether side now and uh, this is fairly compact because I only sent things 400 blocks but in theory there's no limit to how far you could send stuff. You've just got to extend this design in a way that you want to do that. And I'll show you what that looks like later. But the minecart we send through as the piece of mail going to player 2 would come along this rail track. It would go all the way around the outside, it would come all the way down here, and over to here, which is the player 2 portal. And the same exists on this side, so if we go through here, this is underneath player 2 in the swamp, and uh, it's exactly the same machine, set up in exactly the same way. There are just some minor differences which I'll explain in a minute between the two systems. All this stuff in the middle is the chunk loading array, and uh, yeah, it's it's very clever and very dynamic in the way it works. So how does it know to send the mail to player two? Well, that's where the stamp comes in. So it comes along here, and uh, when it passes by any other player's uh, portal, there is an item filter. So in here we have player two stamps. It will pull out the player two stamp here. That in turn will unpower this torch, which will switch this track and send the cart this way and over here. Otherwise, the track would carry on its way. Uh, this is very funky you know, on player two side of things. I did this on purpose. This is the, um, I think it's called the southeast orientation issue where it's very difficult to get around how to switch the track in the way you want it if you're going in a certain orientation. So I had to do this very janky, um, oh, here it is, yeah, southeast rule, I had to like, send this minecart up and jump it down again in order to enable this to switch the way we wanted it to, but that's all fine. The minecart comes through. We have hoppers here. This first hopper pulls out the two items from the cart as it travels over and holds them there. And then the minecart gets broken, picked up and put into this dispenser. That dispenser is then powered. It recycles the same hopper with a chest, puts it there, the two items get put back in it, that resets the timer cooldown. So, it, and after an item passes through a portal, it can't go back through, after an entity passes through, it can't go back through for 15 seconds as a cooldown on it. This is to stop mobs just sort of constantly port jumping dimensions as they come through all the time. Uh, so that applies to minecarts. So this is a this is gotten around by breaking the minecart and replacing it in the world, which resets the timer that would come around and pop straight on through. Uh, yeah, so the chunk loading stuff in between, this is kind of complicated and this is where I had the most headaches. You can see over here, here's the item filter for player one. Uh, there's the player one stamp. This side is much simpler because it's heading in a different direction. This one is heading north and so the rail switching is uh, much more straightforward. We can see that this rail just switches back and forward as expected. So if there is a player one stamp, this minecart line will switch. We don't need all that funky rail stuff. It would hold down here and exactly the same thing, sending it off into that portal. Everything else here is all to do with chunk loading. So how does the chunk loading work? Uh, the chunk loaders are these portals here. And if we turn on chunk borders, we can see that there is a portal roughly in the center of every chunk. One here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. And of course, the portal's in its own chunk over here. Uh, I also set this up very purposely so that this person's portal is in the same chunk as this 
chunk loader, which obviously doesn't work. The, they get confused and you end up uh, sending stuff through the chunk loaders that pop out here. So in this particular scenario, what I've done is I've just removed a single piece of redstone from here, which is the activator rail that will set it off. We'll go through that in a minute. Uh, the same over this side. And what that does is it's simply disabled this chunk loader. You could optionally just not build it if you wanted, but I left it in uh, to keep the repeating pattern of the, the line if you wanted to take a light medica. And if you do, remember to add that bit of redstone back in to activate this guy again. So the rail cart will head on through. It'll hit this activator rail. When it does, that activates this redstone line and that redstone line fires this dispenser first. This dispenser has got flint and steel and we've got a load of them in here. This lights the portal. We also have a signal carried through to this side that fires the droppers. So we've got a dropper facing up and a dropper facing into the portal here. And I've used just put three items in. That's all you need. Two in the dropper below, one in the dropper above. And I've used different rails so it's easy to see for testing that the items are being recycled. If you use the same item, it's hard to see that it's uh, changing at all. When the portal is lit, this item is spat through. In fact, let's head on through to the other side and we can see it because we need a portal on the other side, of course, to receive this. And that needs to be permanently lit. So let's light that manually. Head on through. This is one of many chunk loader portals we've set up in the overworld. This is the very end one, and I put a tunnel between them all. So you can see, here's the next one over here. Here is uh, player one's base, I believe. Yep. And then, yeah, all of these portals go off in this direction. There's another. There's another. And the final one over here. And then finally, this branches off to player two's base, which is quite a way off in this direction over here. Ta -da. So on this side of the chunk loader, that rail item is caught by this hopper. That is read by this comparator, which powers this on a delay. So there's enough time for it to pass through into the dropper and the dropper. And it's spat back through the portal to the other side. It's collected in this hopper, so those three items are recycled. And just after that happens, we have a bit of a pulse extension going on here. This double uh, observer line is pulsed into here, which fires the dispenser with the lava in. And it'll get a double fire as the comparator collect detecting that the item is returned is set off and then turns off again. And that will light the... that'll turn off the portal and collect the lava again. So let's simulate that real quickly with a minecart heading over. So the minecart lands on there, sets that off. We saw the item come through and it breaks <laughs> as quick as that. So in that, in that very short span of time, the portal is lit, the item is shot through, it's shot back, collected, portal breaks. And that whole thing happens with that circuit. So this portal doesn't stay lit all the time. So if people are creating other portals in the overworld, they don't accidentally end up inside this thing because it's very difficult to know exactly where you can and can't place portals in the overworld because of this. The overworld chunk loaders do need to remain lit at all time because if you don't, this will probably just create another portal somewhere else because that other portal isn't lit in order to link to. And when building this, you've got to make sure, obviously, you do connect them. So you build them in the exact same uh, coordinates, dividing the coordinates by eight, matching the Y levels one to one, and make sure you walk through as a player in order to make sure the link is uh, confirmed and working when building this. So every time a minecart passes over one of these activation rails, this is set off. And that needs to be done on both sides. So um, this isn't working because of this one. Let's look at this chunk. There's a activator rail here. So the minecarts go clockwise around here. So as soon as they enter this chunk, they pass this rail which activates this and loads this chunk and the neighboring ones. And it goes all the way around and on the way back, there's a second activator rail here, which does the same on the way back. On these end stations, we don't need two activator rails because it will it loads the chunk for 15 seconds. And um, yeah, this activator rail is plenty of time for this single minecart to pass all the way around this chunk and return. So we don't need a second one here. 
And in fact, it may cause problems because if it reaches here before this uh, whole chunk loader has completed its cycle, then that's going to cause you problems. This one is turned off, as we said, so it'll come along here, activate this guy, go all the way around, activate this guy, activate this guy. I had to change the minecart and duck it in a little bit here because we need this circuit to do the rail switching and it would be interfering with some of this stuff, so I just moved it all back one. This is that southeast rule stuff, so the minecart in this instance would whoop, jump straight over the top and loop on back around again. At this side, the player portal and the chunk loader portal are in different chunks. So this one needs to be remain active because it's in a different chunk to this one. When the minecart comes through the player two portal, it does it loads um, like a three by three chunk centered on here. So it will load this chunk and it will load this chunk, the one over there and the ones behind in the in the wall. So this this will all be loaded by the time it gets here. So it's got plenty of time to get all the way to here before it needs the next uh, chunk loading. In fact, this chunk will already have been loaded, so this will help load the one ahead of it, and this will help load the one ahead of it, etc. You're going to want to spawn-proof this whole area, so wherever there's a spawnable surface, I missed one here, for example, you're going to want to make sure you slab those over. Probably these redstone blocks as well is a good idea. I'll make sure that it is totally spawn proof for the world download because what you don't want is um, zombie picklings coming in here and messing things up. So slab over everything that you possibly can. Mobs can spawn in portal frames as well and the light levels in here are low so I recommend lighting this up. Apologies I play with gamma turned on so I haven't uh, lit this up either particularly well so you might want to go through and make sure that it is, uh, is well lit as an environment in which to work safely if you're not a gamma always on kind of person. Now there are ways to simplify this. You don't have to do this dynamic chunk loading thing if you don't want. The simpler thing to do is to just have this portal on at all time both in the overworld and the nether and just have the item thing passing through which is uh, this, this part here. So you, you'll just need um, effectively the same thing on both sides of the fence and you can either leave that running permanently, which I don't recommend, or it is activated on demand via this, and it kickstarts the process. But this whole make, starting the portal with the fire starters, with the flint steel, and then breaking it with the lava and the pulse extender, you could strip all that out if you so desired. It just means that you need to be aware of where you place portals in the overworld to make sure you don't accidentally link up with these, which will break the chunk loading and probably end up with players stuck inside there. Just be very careful with your chunk loading when you're thinking about where you're placing activator rails and any uh, rails and other bits and pieces in the world. So if the minecart's coming around here towards uh, player one, then in this instance, we're activating here, which loads this chunk. It does also load this chunk, which is totally empty at the moment. So in theory, we could have rails coming a bit further out. Say this portal was all the way up against the chunk border, it would still be fine to have rails coming out into this chunk, passing back through, because from here, there's like one in every direction chunk is loaded at three by three from, from this point. So that would work. But if it isn't, if this was one further back, then be wary to make sure you keep everything inside the chunk. That would be true over this side for player two, right? So as the minecart comes through, we load this chunk, which makes sure this chunk is loaded. However, if there was a portal out there, we would need to put another chunk loader in between because it would load this chunk and it would pass into the chunk where the portal is beyond and that wouldn't be loaded. The minecart would just stop dead because the rails wouldn't be powered or the, the nothing would be loaded, so the minecart would just be frozen effectively. You've got to keep all of that stuff in mind. So this chunk loading array is a relatively simple one. It's just pretty much a straight line that we're branching off of where we need to. Um, on the Hermitcraft server, they did a big L, so they plotted out on a map exactly where all the Hermit spaces are and drew like a line through it, and it would be recommended to do the same, so you could just turn this around a corner and um, continue it in that way. It's definitely advisable to keep the chunk loading circuit 
line as, as simple as possible and then just branch off of it a short distance wherever you can, chunk loading in between where necessary. But you don't want to create too many, uh, too much of a complicated shape because you want a single track going all the way around the entire thing and you don't want that to be too long. Obviously, the longer your track, the longer it might take for a message to be delivered. This is going 400 blocks, takes about 28 seconds. I think they did about a, over a thousand blocks on the Hermitcraft server and it took a minute and a half or something like that, which isn't too bad, but you're limited by the speed a minecart can travel. As long as everything is chunk loaded along the way, you should be fine. But you need one continuous track following the entire path of the chunk loaded track with the junctions heading off in different directions. You can chunk load the junctions themselves. So if this was several chunks back in that direction, we could just repeat the chunk loader circuit with the activator rails along a line here, making sure that the chunks ahead of us are loaded so that by the time we get to the portal, everything is fine. And then any, obviously on the way back as well, the same set of portals would get activated and it would pick up the return line and carry on all the way back. In the overworld side, everything is connected. I made little tunnels. So you've got uh, tunnels going out here towards the chunk loaders, as we saw when we were flying around in free cam. And then there's a big line just going off in this direction. I set the line of the tunnel aligned to the bottom left corner block of the portal uh, in order to make it easy to align the next chunk loader on the other side. And when making these, make sure you put the functionality on the right side of things. So and the other, on the nether side, the dispenser firing is facing this way and pushing through there so it will land in the hopper and get collected and vice versa on this side. So you need to make sure you test and align all those things correctly, probably using your compass direction, like facing east in this instance, to make sure you align all of those things. There's one more loader east in that direction. There's three more off in that direction. And make sure to complete your corner portals or Etho will come and hunt you down. Now these you want to put fairly low in the world. We're at Y9 here. So you want this machinery kind of out of the way, but also low enough in the world so that those numbers can align with the nether side of things. So if we go to the same place in nether, the same block is here. You can see uh, we're at level nine as well, and that will ensure that these all stay linked up. So this is pretty low down in the nether. We're only just a couple of blocks off of bedrock at the very bottom of the world here. And that helps the coordinates all stay in sync and the portals stay connecting to the right portals. You can decorate this however you want. I've just put in the same basic decoration that uh, Tango and Etho did for Scar's initial portal. And I've left this sort of open so you can see what's going on here in order to inspect it. Probably grab a light matic of this very specific piece if you need it. And I'll leave this little shulker box for testing here along with all of the stamps in the barrel is ready for you to test as well as the command block to jump between the two locations quickly and test it yourself. If you don't want to build it, it's just fun to play with and test and send stuff from two areas of the world on a map. So please download the world and let us know how you get on. I'll be keen to see if anyone puts these things in their worlds, in their servers, and uh, it would be amazing to get a whole host of mail delivery systems across the world set up in different servers. So let me know in the comments how you get on enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give us a like. And if you want to see what I get up to with some of my other content, please subscribe. I'm part of an SMP called Igniter, where we do some pretty amazing Hermitcraft like stuff on a regular basis. And I also have a single player series where I'm playing around with some modded Minecraft in Auto Terra Firmacraft. All of that is in my channel. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully see you again. Bye for now.